Let's calm down. There we go. Not just Phil X. We've got the Go Go's right after. Man, it's a big afternoon for us. Mm. Do you hear me now? You hear me now? Yeah, we got you loud and clear. Sounds good. Which this one's better? Yeah, yeah. we yeah. couldn't hear you before, but uh, gonna, we've got gonna, Phil X followed by the Go Go's. It's a I'm big afternoon. <laughs> He's What's the man that? behind the mask. <laughs> that little Alice Cooper. Is that Frozen Ghost? No, it's Alice Cooper. Oh, that's Alice Cooper from the mask. I'm sorry. I'm I'm so I'm I'm gonna be Canadian today. Nice. Yeah, nice I toque. Know. We'll have to ask Phil X. Why haven't you ever played with Alice Cooper? Everybody else has. I wouldn't say everybody else. I recorded with Alice Cooper, which is oh, that's right. Uh, which is to me was pretty meaningful. Like uh, it was Brutal Planet back in 2001. The funny that's, thing. That's right. Is mm. it, I mean, I, th I think I've said this, I've told this story a lot, but it was like Rob Zombie gave my number to Alice Cooper when they were golfing. <laughs> that's a pretty good story. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it yeah. went down like that. So it was kind of, uh, I mean, if someone's going to give your na number to somebody, that's a, that's a pretty cool referral, right? Yeah, you've yeah. been getting a lot of good referrals that and of course the the Bon Jovi one and, and Triumph. I mean, <laughs> you, you've, you've, you've done oh good in the God. world of referrals. Yeah, I'm, I've done so well that it's a giant, huge mess behind me. I just noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly recording. I'm, I'm working. I'm recording. I'm, uh, this is the same computer here that I record on and, and squelching a little bit. You yeah, can see my dad's right behind me, right there. That's my dad, in huh. Suzuki. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it uh, it uh, it was a it was a six string instrument before before it became a four string. I mean, an eight string instrument. So it's it used to be three pairs, and then in the fifties or the sixties, it became four pairs. And so what kind of sound does it have? Does it sound almost like a mandolin with like a longer neck, or no? no see, that it doesn't sound like a mandolin because it's not short. Like mm. that's a long neck. It's twenty four or something higher than that frets, mm. and uh, it's really awkward to play because it's got a really. Oh. Or... What? What? It's like you need a some you need a velcro it to your belt or something. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, yeah, so wait a minute, Jeremy. Old we've old. never I've never spoken to you before. This guy. Yeah. No, we've never met. That's right. I'm Jeremy. Nice to meet you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Bonjour. We're talking I, I like that we already know each other. It's like I, I didn't know Mitch needed help. <laughs> yeah, Mitch always needs help. Look at him. Come on now. You know what? Listen, I've gotten to the age where I need to retire, and I, you know, Jeremy's only twenty six, so we got, got to bring him in. Let him be, get him in slowly. Yeah. See, yeah. but he is—he is the number one um, on-air personality in Montreal. Believe it or not, that's so, fantastic. Believe yeah. it or not. So yeah, there you go. You know, I do believe it. I do believe it because you're Canadian. Canadians yeah. kick ass. Small market. Canadi Can most Canadians that kick ass <clears throat> move to the States and kick ass. <laughs> like Todd and Brent and yourself. Yeah. You know. I, I, uh, funny, I was on Two Talk a couple of weeks ago, or was it a month ago? I don't know. We talked about coffee. Nice. <laughs> I don't, I'm drinking it now. Is that is that a Timmy's? Coffee. You got a Tim Hortons brew in there or what? Uh, no way. <laughs> no, no, no. Even people that drink Tim Hortons don't like Tim Hortons. They just drink it because the only time, the only time I have Tim Hortons when I go to Toronto to visit my mom, or if Bon Jovi's <laughs> playing the Air Canada Center, which isn't the Air Canada Center anymore. Uh, no, what is it? The oh. Scotia Bank Place or Scotia Bank yeah. Arena. Yeah. Bank so Arena. every time I go to Toronto and specifically <laughs> Mississauga to visit my mom, I go to I meet. Tim, Gilmore at Tim Hortons and we have coffee and talk nice. and stuff. But uh, he's uh yeah, we, we're still in touch. It's pretty awesome. Um, you said you were think, you're recording right now. So on the computer that you're on, this is your Pro Tools computer, and like you use this for all your like recording stuff. Really? Yes. Nice. And, so, and Zoom. And Zoom. Yeah, Mitch. So you know we're we're on like a Bon Jovi computer right now, technically. No, I don't record Bon Jovi here. You should pretty, pretty much not? Every, everything, but <laughs> no, yeah. I was actually, I'm working on some drills today. Um, yeah. So let's, let, yeah. let's talk about the drill. Cause uh, let's talk about drills. Uh, mm. The, the uh, stupid, good looking things. Volume two is coming out in the future. And yes, I'm just going to read. Cause I got it in front of me. You got Tommy Lee, 
Liberty DeVito, who played, of course, with uh, Billy Joel for years. Mm-hmm. Kenny Aronoff, who's played well with pretty much everybody. Yeah. And Ray Luzier, who, of course, is with uh, the one and only... Um, Corn, uh, corn, yeah. Corn. I was, I was gonna say the guy you, from the Killer Dwarves because okay, he... Jeez. Nah. There's also uh, um, Jeremy Spencer, who was oh, actually yeah. the original drummer in the Drills before he moved on to metal, with yeah. uh, and didn't really well with uh, Five Finger Death Punch, yeah. and um, and there's uh, I think we're still missing somebody. Brian Tishy is on a track. Nice. It's gonna be right. more. Volume two was going to be six. So it looked like a package. Volume one was six tracks. Volume two will be six tracks. And then we thought, you know what? It, people have waited so long. Let's just make it 10 tracks. And then we can also repeat drummers. So it's going to be six drummers that you haven't heard from, but we're going to repeat <laughs> Brent and I believe Abe. And uh, Brent's on wow. a few tracks because we've actually done a few recordings together. Um, but uh, Gary Novak. Is the drummer that played on the current single, which is I Love You on Her Lips. Yes. Mm, so nice. So, so talk to me about this, because with, with Golden Robot, and maybe it's the, the labels, the way to market stuff. But you sort of every band, including the drills, you, you, you put out a, a single every whatever, three months, four months, whatever. And the albums come down the road. Is, is that something that, that you want to do? Is that a label decision? And in a sense, it's kind of cool because it, it sort of keeps you in the news every few yeah. months, right? Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, if you don't, I personally believe, like I follow, you know, the temperature of the music industry changes all the time. But the one thing that stays constant is that people want content. Mm-hmm. And now they don't want, sometimes they want it all at the same time and sometimes they don't. I remember, you know, I do a live chat on the PhilX app twice a week and we talk, I talk to the fans. And I'm like, so would you guys want, you know, would you prefer six songs or 10 songs? And everybody's like, unanimously, 10 songs would be amazing. So, um, you know, I have to listen to my public because we're all buds now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Right. And, and you know, talking about all those drummers that you have on this project, it's like they're all com- they're all totally different from each other. So it's like, you know. Talking about yeah. Tommy Lee, does Tommy is actually Tommy playing a drum kit or is he like programming beats on this? Because you know he could do both. Oh hey, no! Can, oh, yeah, he can, can I stop both, you just but... a second? Are, are is is the audio sort of funky for both of you? Because it's coming in funky on Jeremy's end and coming in funky on Phil's end. I don't. It, I don't know. I'm hearing everybody pretty good. Yeah, okay. Phil, huh? Phil's coming in a little squelchy every now and then, but he it seems to be balanced out now. Maybe he'll just stay cl- right on the mic and not yeah. get loud. But, I'm, I'm hearing that on yours too, Jerry. I mean, maybe it's my end. Who knows? All right, okay. All right go on. Well, maybe both of our now. connections are terrible today. Maybe. All right, maybe, baby. Um, but yeah, go ahead. What? I I uh, when because I'm I'm uh, associated with and uh, and have worked with all these drummers before. Um, I just you know Tommy's a bro. I played on all the a lot of guitars on his uh, solo record, so. I call him up and I go, hey, man, you want to play on the track? And he's like, yeah, sure. Come on over. And he come. I go, you know, we went to his studio and. Uh, actually, he got so involved that I sent him like I wrote a song. I listened to a Motley Crue live drum solo where he was playing this groove. Mm-hmm. And I want to be when I call up a drummer and say, hey, do you want to play on the track? I don't I don't want it to be like, hey, pick one. I want it to be like something I put together for that drummer. So I took this groove and I wrote a song to the groove and I sent it to Tommy and I go, hey, this is do you want this is the song I'd love you to play on. And he goes, oh, man, this is amazing. But I think it's fast. Can you can we slow it down? And then he got on his computer and took a sample of what I sent him and put a groove to it like 10 beats per minute slower so I could hear what it would sound like. And then when we got into the studio, we slowed it down even more. And uh, but it's funny because before we did that, we recorded four other drummers at his studio. I think it was uh, um, Abe and Matt Chamberlain mm. and Kenny Aronoff and uh, I want to say Glenn Sobel and Randy Cook, another Canadian. And um, so he came down when we were doing the Matt Chamberlain. And he's like, what is this? I'm like, it's a new Joel's track. And he's like, who 
is that? And he's talking about Matt Chamberlain, who's totally killing the track. Mm. And uh, he's listening and he's really animated in the studio. Like he's like a kid in a candy store. He's like, <laughs> nice. He's actually grooving. He's into it. He's grooving and he's in like those it. SNL and characters gets, from back in the day. And, and this is the thing. He he's into it and he's grooving and the head's bobbing. And then we get to the bridge and he kind of stops. And he's looking around and I'm like, I got to change the bridge. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. If Tommy stops bobbing his head, that means it ain't right. So I went home and I rewrote the bridge. And then I called him the next day. I go, hey, man, check this out. I rewrote the bridge. He goes, why would you rewrote write the bridge? I go, because you stopped bobbing your head. Bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you're kidding me. You rewrote a bridge because I stopped bobbing my head. I go, fuck, yeah, dude. Wow. It's better than having like an A&R guy over your shoulder. You just got Tommy Leaf. He's vibing. Great. If not, got to rewrite it. Exactly. But then he got re- he got even more when he heard that track, he got even more excited about playing on the on the track that I sent him. And it was the same thing with Matt Chamberlain. Matt Chamberlain is such a great drummer. And we did a session together. And when they were like, hey, why don't you guys take five? We got to like set something up like a vocal chain or something. We would start jamming Zeppelin. And I'm like, oh, my God, this got such a great vibe and a great player and all that stuff. So I had that. I sent him two songs or three songs. And I said, hey, man, two. And he just wrote back and said, hey, man, I'll play on anything. And I'm like, that's not what I want to hear. So then I specifically wrote something to say on volume one for Matt Chamberlain. And I sent it to him. And then I got the correct answer, which was, oh, yeah, dude, this is awesome. I'll play on this for sure. So that's, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I want it to be, Every time we went in, in, in it, the whole thing trickles into volume two, where the, every time we went into the studio with the drummer, that drummer's in the band for an hour and a half. So it's me, Dan, sorry, mm. band, and a drummer. And whether it's Taylor Hawkins or Tommy yeah, Lee, it's amazing. we're sitting there talking about this is going to happen here and this is going to happen here. And I'm like, Hey, can you hit more snares in that section? And he goes, I kind of like, I thought it was dramatic when there wasn't a snare there. So this is the second time. And we're talking like a band. Hmm. Meanwhile, me ha- having a history with Tommy since 99 is one thing, but Dan walked in, met Tommy and now he's recording with them. So he was kind of flipped out because he's a huge Tommy, um, Motley Crue fan. Yeah. So uh, don't worry. He kept it together. Cause he's a, <laughs> he's, he's a, he's a cool cucumber. Unlike Mitch, um, would be fangirling. Be fangirling. <laughs> By the way, when he's describing that they every drummer's in for an hour and a half, I'm thinking, when did this become an LA Guns interview? I'm... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bottom tip. <laughs> there's there's a few bands, man. You know what? It's funny though because the drills have had so many live drummers, and so, so that's why to the the drummers, it's not you know, it's it it just seemed like the next step to get like. 14 drummers on the tracks yeah, yeah but they're all um, they're all they're all great i mean how, how do you say you know no what, you know who was who wasn't on your list and i didn't even mention so tico torres is on the track oh, oh wow so nice. had, i was living in vegas at the time in 2018 we were touring we were playing t-mobile center and then the next day we had a day off so i walked up to tico the day before and i said hey man um we've got a day off tomorrow i know you love your days off, but like he goes golfing and just chills out and stuff. But if, if I get a studio, would you come in and play drums on a drills track? And he goes, yeah, I'd do anything for you. And I'm like, ah. so we went in the studio and cut a Tico track. So, um, it's a really exciting track. I'm so excited. And, and I don't tell people who's drumming on it. When I send a rough around, I send it to Dan. I go, Hey, what do you think of this? And then I sent it to a couple of other people and they're like, who's on drums? And I go, fuck, Tico motherfucking Taurus. <laughs> or they go, ugh, who's on drums? No, no, hey, they go, they love Tico. Dude, Isn't he one of the most underrated, underrated guys? Yeah, totally. Think, totally. Hooks on you. Yeah. You know, they 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 have there's there's a bunch of them where we have these conversations. Who's the greatest guitarist and who's this? And there's a lot, you know, Tom Hamilton on bass gets overlooked. Joey Kramer gets overlooked. Tico Torres gets overlooked. All, and it's just like, no. Yeah. Dude. Listen to those songs. They're fucking solid. They are so, you know. Yeah, but anyway. it's not only, he owns every measure in that yeah. band. Yeah, he plays like a metronome. He's yeah. locked in. Of every song. And yeah. he has this Cuban 
slight swing happening with everything and it's it's pretty amazing like mm. i i and i have this great relationship with him on and off stage when we're on stage there's a couple of times where uh we just look at each other and we like we do an extended always solo when uh and it was one of the two of the best in 2019 one was at the at the Wembley Stadium in uh mm. 2019 yeah and then the second one rock and rio so i'm just doing this and it's funny i don't know i feel like oh man that was that one was okay but then my wife calls me because it was broadcast in the u.s and she goes oh my god your solo always brought me to tears my point is that me and tico look at each other and we kind of he'll do a fill and i'll do something off his fill and then he'll do a fill off what i just did and and we have that cooking all the time and i love that i think Mm. I, I think that element of communication and chemistry is missing in a lot of live situations. So yeah. we, I think we keep it alive. I'm, I'm happy to say. And it's nice to see that you guys have that band camaraderie where you can actually go on stage and have some fun. It's not just like, you know, a business engagement. You're there just having a blast, playing some rock and roll. Exactly. Listen, and it's funny because there's a, a coda that we do. The opening, the last record, the Bon Jovi record was This House Is Not For Sale. Mm. And we opened the entire like three years with that song and there's a quote in that song where i do solo at the end and i'm just i it's basically me saying hey man here i am it's phil x hello so i do my thing and then i i you know after a couple of weeks oh that that's cool and that's cool oh i love that lick i'm gonna keep doing that and then i oh, know solo every night but then tico started doing what I was doing on guitar, but on drums. And I turned around and went, what, what was that? That was amazing, holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's epic. I'm gonna have to go on YouTube and like try and find something of that, because that's awesome. Yeah, find some of that stuff. It's Because it's, uh, it's exciting. It's Nothing exciting. beats a Bon Jovi show. Nothing yeah. beats it. Yeah, for sure. That and Metallica, uh, those are still, they're still my two. If I have to start choosing between which bands I'm gonna pay to go see, those are still the two that I'm going to. Wow, check that shit out, man. Hmm. Oh, listen, I've seen, I don't know, 36, 37 Bon Jovi shows. I never gets old. Phil, you know, wow. Mitch had an, a Bon Jovi playlist in his phone. I don't know if you still have it or not, but how many songs was it? Uh, I have it. It's uh, it's just under 600 songs. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I'll, I'll go. I'll go check. Give me well, a second. Perfectly I, you know, curated, like he he like like Ziffy was the music director of a Bon Jovi radio station. <laughs> like every perfect segue, like even like live on, track to live track, we had like audience swells. Like it's like perfect. Oh, yeah, man, it's that's, uh, that's awesome. Are, is there is, any repeats? Uh, is there any repeats like a live version and a studio yeah, version? Yeah, yeah, of course there's live version, and studio version, but it's it's nine hundred. It's a uh, no, it's a uh, four hundred and ninety songs, and right now I've got. Let me see here. I've got blood in the water going into stick to your guns. And then I've got down here. Uh, I want to be loved going into limitless, which goes into someday I'll be Saturday night from crossroads. So, wow. You know yeah, what I mean? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, it's uh, picking the set list for you guys. <laughs> it is a, uh, it is a 17.4 gigs and 1.6 days long. <laughs> it's a good thing. I don't have to learn all that. All those songs. Listen, listen, I like my. Hey, we're gonna do a six. We're gonna do a day and a half show. Everybody, come prepared, dude. Imagine. (laughs) Well, listen. uh, Not that we want to turn this into a Bon Jovi thing, but when they come to Montreal, they always go twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight songs. You'll go see them in whatever Saratoga Springs, New York, and they'll do a twenty song set list. And then they come to Montreal and or Toronto, and suddenly it's a three and a half hour marathon. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I've never been bored. I don't know if anybody else has told you guys this, but Montreal is the loudest yeah. inside audience. Yes. Mm. Anywhere. Yes. Yeah. And, and that is for Bon Jovi and Def Leppard. That is, yeah. it is absolutely true. And uh, having seen concerts all over the world, you, you, know, you, yeah. you go to LA and people show up three songs in and they leave, you know, five songs after yeah. New York, they sort of sit there and they go, all right. Yeah. Chill to Montreal and Quebec. Yeah. And it's just, but it's funny, I don't know if I told you the story, but the last time when that we played in Montreal, um, the bar at the hotel closed. So me and my buddy who came from Toronto to see us and hang with me, we walked across the street to this club and we walk up to the door guy. And, yeah, I think uh, you told me this. He, he, 
but keep going. Jeremy, I, don't, goes, I don't know the story. Keep going. Yeah. He goes, uh, yeah, uh, you got the wrong jacket and your buddy's got the boots. Can't come in. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> and I, I hate dropping the name, but I. But he I pulled just, out I the Bon Jovi card. Yeah, I'm like, so, uh, <laughs> what if I was to tell you that <laughs> I just played the Bell Center with Bon Jovi? And I, me and my buddy, we just want to get a drink. And he looked at me and he goes, prove it. So I'm like, okay, you know, I only have 500 photos of me and John on stage. So I'm showing him and he's like, yeah. Chin hits the ground. He goes, okay, here's my card. I'm like, <laughs> but go on in. So go on in. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta love when that shit happens, man. You gotta be able to pull the Bon Jovi card when you can use it. Why not? Dude, I usually do it for my kids. Like, oh, we, you can't squeeze this in to get my kids a picture with Santa Claus? What if I was to present an opportunity to you when we play the T-Mobile Center? <laughs> like, backstage passes. You know? Oh, man. Oh, man. I don't man. do it for me, but sometimes, you know, I'll get on, on um, I'll get off a, a speeding ticket once in a while. And it's not because I dropped the name, but the cop comes back and goes, yeah, you're free to go. And I'm like, hmm. What? He's like, well, I Googled you in the car. <laughs> yeah, you know what happens when Mitch gets pulled over? He gets du- he gets double tickets. I get nice. double tickets, yeah, and, and they impound the car. But, you know. Yeah, Mitch listen. goes, but, but I, I'm interviewing Phil X and the Go-Go's. I, I, I need to go. Double ticket. <laughs> so the Go-Go's, that's crazy. That's awesome. I know. They're, they yeah. are. So, so we've got a, a, a member of a band who's in a Hall of Fame right now and a member of a band who's going to be in the Hall of Fame. So it's the Hall of Fame show today. The Hall of Fame show. But I like it. So in terms of of the drills, you know, you've got 10 drummers and all that. But at some point, does it become the band that carries Phil to his 60s and 70s? Or once the whole Bon Jovi gigs over, you go start doing, you know, Trans Siberian Orchestra and the orchestra pit at the at that Broadway. Like, where do you sort of see yourself? Well, there's nothing wrong being in the orchestra. I mean, Joel Hoekstra has done it. It's, no, it's no, 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 no. I wasn't. I wasn't hooing that. <laughs> I, w- I was hooing uh, Broadway. But uh, no, T- yeah, TSO man. I mean. If uh, if I'm not busy and I can go out and uh, and play guitar and feed the kids, uh, right. I'm in. But do you um, want to form a band, or do you or do you just want to be the the guy who's in whatever shares band? You know, when when John retires. No, I mean I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty picky when it comes to that. You know, okay. I don't I I mean I'd love the thing that we figured out with the drills is that because we did before COVID the COVID shutdown we were in the UK and we did eight out of 16 shows because as soon as we were done the eight they're like you gotta go home so <laughs> and the start later. Eight, eight show european leg we had to fly home to the lockdown so but what i did learn was you know obviously streaming is a never bothered me never bothered me that people stopped paying for music because they stream music and because they still buy tickets and merch packages and when you go on the road you start you know you gotta find new ways to make everything roll like a nice machine so Mm -hmm. we figured out was we had um you know we'd have vip packages in 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 the uk but i was like how can we what can we do for the people that pay extra to come and meet the band before the show so that they don't get ticked off when we meet everybody at the merch table after and Mm -hmm. the easy answer for that was let them come to sound check and make requests. Hmm. So, you know, one, one person's like, you know, uh, I want my money back, which is on volume one. And we play that. And then somebody goes, hi, where the hell? And then we play that. And then <laughs> the photos, uh, the, 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 they buy merch, we sign whatever they want. Uh, but by the time the show's done and we get to the merch table, they don't care. They had a, a special performance. So, but this is the kind of thing that I mean. You really have to find something that will work that becomes that makes up for not selling music. So yeah, you you got to kind of find a way to create a special experience right. that people are willing so to spend their money on. You can complain about it like a lot of people do, or you can work with it. You know, so we we roll with the punches. We're that kind of band. And I and Mitch, to answer your question, I could do the drills forever. 
Like, okay. I really, it's my, it's my baby. You know, I write all the songs. I say what I want to say. I sing the way I want to sing. I play the way I want to play. It's just me. Now on, on uh, volume two, Dan has a song on it that he also sings. So he wrote a song and sent to me a couple of years ago. And he goes, hey, man, I'm going to put out a solo record. What do you think of this track? I'm like, yeah, I don't know about your solo record. I think it's going on the new Joe's record. <laughs> so I basically stole his song and uh, I commandeered his song. Let's put it that way. Mm. And uh, we tracked it with Ryan McMillan. He played drums for Matchbox 20. We recorded it at 606 Studios in Northridge and Dan sang it. And we rocked that song that we played it live. Even before it, it's getting released, uh, we played it live in the UK. And, and all the fans were like, wow, this is what a great tune. And Dan singing. And I'm up on stage and I'm, I'm proud of my buddy. Man, this, this is drills and I love it. So <laughs> now, just other than stealing his song, <laughs> are all the drill songs written specifically for the drills or... Do you offer them to other people, whether it's Tommy Lee or, or, or somebody else's solo record or John for a bunch of, do you offer these songs out and then say, okay, they didn't go there. Let me rework them for the drills. Or do you say I'm writing in the drill space, but don't, this is drills. Don't touch, you know? Well, there's, um, there's a couple of songs that actually that, that got released by Tommy Lee. So um, when he did uh, Tommy land the ride, I had written a song and Tommy pulled the Dan on me. Mm. I said, because the song's called Tired, and I, the first lyric in the course is Tire, uh, Tommy got tired of Pamela. And it goes on like Puffy got tired of J Lo and all this stuff, right? Nice. So, but I <laughs> sent it to him because I thought he'd get a kick out of it. And he's going, dude, we got to do the song on the record. I'm like, what? Wait, what? What? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we ended up doing that. So, and it was great. You know, that was because uh, that record. I went went gold. So I got, and he gave me a hundred percent of the song. Oh, wow. Uh, which was an incredible Christmas present when I got that check. Um, so, but, and later on, there's a song that talk you off the ledge is on a drills record, but we also did it on Tommy's, uh, the, me the second methods of mayhem record, mm. which was the last solo record he put out. That was a, a band thing. And, but it was changed to talk me off the ledge. So I submitted two songs. There was a ballad called um, Blame. So there's three songs that I wrote that Tommy uh, recut. Um, I never re never released Blame. And I think we might jam Tired sometime. It's a great tune. Nice. Um, the I haven't written, I think John and I are writing situation, are writing is so much different you know i think i write very tongue-in-cheeky uh there's a, a sense of comedy sometimes um not to the you know the steel panther uh to that depth but right um you know there's there's a little bit of uh a lot of wordplay and interpretive i love interpretive lyrics because when you write something and somebody walks up to you and says what do you mean by that and i'm like what do you think i meant and they tell me something and i'm like that's actually better than what i meant thanks <laughs> because that's it's interpretive um john writes every every word that he writes is meant to be that word there's no reading between the lines it's a punch in the face and this mm. is what i mean and this is what you get so um it's very different and he likes the drills man he you know he listened to some stuff and he goes wow this is this is really good and then he goes hmm you're a hockey champion of the world <laughs> i could never sing that and i'm like you're totally right <laughs> yeah right i well, can't let me argue, ask you about that. i can't uh, argue with that yeah. how, how important are your vocals and your backing vocals to the bon jovi thing these days when you when you're doing 2020 or this house is uh, this house is not for sale because you know th 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 those dual harmonies have always been a trademark Bon Jovi thing. Yeah, they really are. But it, it's uh, the stuff on the the current recordings is more of it's not like uh, sometimes you hear David Bryan singing under John and sometimes you hear me uh, and then when we go live everybody's singing. It's a very vocal band. Mm -hmm. so um but yeah but, but doing the classic stuff i it's for me it's i get chills 
still, I still get goosebumps when we play Living on a Prayer. Yeah. And it's been over 200 times now, but it's, it's a song of my youth. So I remember, you know, one year in my younger days, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs in a club when the song comes on. And now I'm on stage singing it for real with the band. So with the guy, that's, that's yeah, that's, <laughs> that's definitely a, uh, a, a bonus of, of being in the situation. Um, you know, and then we do, you know, I, people always like, dude, I didn't, I didn't know you were in Bon Jovi. That's crazy. That's awesome. Do you sing wanted? <laughs> do you sing the Richie lines? And I'm like, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's, I do that. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's killer too. When we were in Toronto, my mom was in the audience and, and John was like, Hey, you want, you want to sing the second verse tonight of Wanted Dead or Alive for your mom? I'm like, oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> and then my mom is beaming, you know, so. It's and then amazing. my mom's pissed because she came to see John, not me. Yeah, right? She <laughs> says, Who, whose idea was that? <laughs> I've heard him <laughs> all the whole life growing up. Now I, now I got to hear him in the arena. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, that was me. I used to drive my parents crazy. But they were so supportive. I mean. Mm. I think that's what it's all about. I think it's being supportive. You know, my, my dad always wanted me to be a musician, but then when I wanted to be professional or when I wanted to get in, instead of going to college, get in a van with a couple of other guys and play, you know, anywhere within a 500 kilometer radius. And, uh, and, uh, he's like, I go, Hey, you wanted me to be a musician. Yeah. But I didn't want you to be a professional. <laughs> <laughs> oh you just want me to be the life of the party but I, I i want to be the life of a big party right yeah no not the backyard party i want to be the party there right right <laughs> see 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 our, our our dear jeremy has his own aspirations he he's starting his own solo record right now so he wants to be the life of the big party too nice <laughs> yeah I can't, wait, I can't wait to sell all 20 albums to my aunties and uncles <laughs> do you play or sing I do it all. Everything. Doing everything, yeah. Wait, you're recording all the instruments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Drums and everything? Drums yeah. and everything. I'm I'm pulling a Wolfgang Van Halen. Dude, if that's you, uh, awesome. If you ever check his uh, Jeremy White YouTube, he's got uh, Shania Twain songs, uh, Def Leppard songs, and uh, other bands, and it's just it's all him. Everything. The recording, Dude, the processing, the drums, the everything. See, I, I'm, I'm really good at everything except drums. And the, I love drums. Yeah, I, I love drums too. Suck. I can't play drums. Do, but, uh, are any of the drill songs like just you? Drums and everything? Like, do you no, 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 have I can't you done that? Drums. I can't play drums. Not at all? No. Oh, okay. I, you got I, a drum I, kit I mean, behind you. Look at it, it's collecting dust. Yeah, well, that's what I'm, I'm saying. We're practicing. Gotta... <laughs> but then, no, the thing is, I set it up because my my because Tico gave a, a little uh, junior DW kit to to my son when he was five for Christmas. So I'm setting up the big kit. So I can show them. I can I can play beats and stuff. I just couldn't get through a drill song because it's so manic. Yeah, like everything is power too. And you, you know, if, yeah. When, when you have a drummer like that, it's like you know, if you're too focused on the song, you can't get into the song. So oh, yeah. if, if you're constantly worried about you know, oh, am I doing this right? It's, you know. No, but the thing is, is the finesse is lost on me, mm. and, and that's because are you like robotic? I, you're there because like... I can't dance, but. I mean, how do, how do I compete with Tico Torres and Liberty DeVito? Forget it. But there's, the thing is, is even, even um, like, so Dan was there on most of the recordings, but I recorded Liberty in New York and I recorded uh, Tico in Vegas. So I played bass on that and did all the background vocals. And, but as I'm listening to the songs, as they're getting, they're getting ready to go get mixed, I'm like, you know, Dan, I'm going to send you these two sessions because it's not right without your bass and your backgrounds. You know, I feel like it's a, uh, I want it to be a team. I want it to be, plus Dan has this amazing feel. Like we play with so many drummers and I always say that Dan is the glue between me and any drummer. And he just makes everything hmm. suck in really tight. And hmm. me, I saw, when I try to groove with Tico, I'm, I'm trying to be in the pocket and but it's it tends to sound a little robotic and uh dan just sounds like a a really smooth and groovy human being mm. and i'd rather i'd rather but people are like hey man it's just bass i'm like 
<laughs> yeah, just all program pieces, it in man. Pro Tools. Oh, no one's gonna it's, notice. It's all it's all the pieces, all the pieces. You know, <laughs> yeah, give, give it a Pro Tools treatment. Oh my God! But yeah. hey, you know, listen. To, so so when does the album officially come out? When does uh, Stupid Good Looking Things Volume Two actually hit the shelves? We're hoping on the summer. We don't have an actual date. Is, uh, is it delayed because of COVID or just because of the pretty choice? Much. No, okay. pretty much. Pretty much delayed by it. But I'm glad it got delayed because we're going to, like I said, we're going to make it 10 songs. And I feel like, I feel like I have so much to say that I'm super excited about letting it all out there. You know, because there are so many songs that can't even get on this record, even though that's 10 that have been written and recorded. I just I'm 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 choosing what I want to say. Like th there's a song called Broken Arrow, the one that Liberty played on. And I wrote it right after my wife and I found out about Chris Cornell passing. Mm -hmm. And uh that's deep. That's a deep topic for the drills. Uh but the song, I feel like it I needed to talk about it. And um it was I think, you know, I I, I tend to pat myself on the back sometimes. <laughs> I found I found a really poetic way to um, and it's asking questions. It's like if you could talk to somebody after. I want to ask, did you make the right decision? You know, and um, what, what would what would they say? So this is kind of a play on 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 that. Hmm. So that song. I can't wait for you guys to hear it too, because it's very musically inspired by Chris Cornell and Soundgarden yeah. and stuff like that. And send Liberty, it over. We'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. Liberty is such like we met on the hired gun set. And he's such an amazing drummer. Like you realize what he brought to Billy Joel when you get in a room, play a couple of chords, and he starts playing drums. He's like 60 something and playing like a young on fire buck you know like it's unbelievable and i and they swing it and the hands going i'm like still got it i love this guy <laughs> so when i asked him to play on it and he said sure um and it was funny because we 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 recorded at the power station sandwiched between two sold out madison square garden bon jovi shows damn man speaking yeah, of yeah right uh, but but speaking of which by the way the uh, that tour you were going to do with brian adams was like my my wet dream tour and it fucking got canceled it was like, I, I got so bummed out dude i couldn't wait to see not only to hear brian and him sing every night no, but, but keith scott and keith mickey scott curry play play guitar every night i would have been there and it's funny because that when that was still on and we were in the uk i was doing press while on the road and they're like so what's the difference man you know uh you're out with the drills and in june you're out with bon jovi i'm like seriously right what <laughs> right now i'm in a van <laughs> and sharing hotel rooms <laughs> and playing in front of 150 to 300 people every night and in june it's jets and arenas so you know it's just it's just, it's just funny because everybody was like the stadium tour the stadium tour and i was like no bon jovi brian adams that was the one i was looking forward to R reckless yeah. and slippery when wet Shh, step back, back. back. that's that's Dude, it i would have gone to every <laughs> show on that run if i could man like oh, that was in I fact, was so excited. They should have just done a an album tour. Like Brian does all of Reckless plus a few others, and John just does all of Slippery. It would have just been a, you know, get Cinderella to open. <laughs> that would have anyway. been epic. Would have been epic oh, yeah. anyway. Mitch, if I that guess... tour gets rebooked, we're gonna have the finagle and all access. We'll go on. The, we'll go to every show. That's right. We'll get a God pass. We'll talk to Key Scott. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> but uh, there we go. Listen, we 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 have to. Uh, move along to the go-go so we have to go-go but always a pleasure and we, you know, I, I love we got the, the feel like in the drums we got the <laughs> we beat got, we, we got, got the, the beat it's great stuff all right listen you got the beat with liberty kenny ray tommy and all the other guys so yeah you got the beat totally. too yeah see i don't have to play drums listen no. to that list when you when you got those people in your phone it's like okay who am i gonna call okay yeah tommy got him you know yeah <laughs> i, I wouldn't want to play drums if i had tommy lee come on Dude, he, uh, and you know what? He's, he's so broad. It, he is like, uh, on YouTube, I was putting out stuff more consistently when, when lockdown went down. Cause I, on YouTube, which is my channel is Phil X 1111. Mm. And uh, I put up, I started putting up 
this is what I played on this record and this is what I played on this record. And I also put up a, a like a mini doc uh, of what it would be like playing with different drummers. So if the episode was Taylor Hawkins and Tommy Lee. It's about 14 minutes long. And I, I want to do more of those. But these two guys, you see Tom, Taylor, the way he plays, and you see what he brings. And then Tommy and all the comments on that video are like, Tommy Lee bringing it. Holy shit. Like he just on fire. I really think Tommy Lee is a super underrated drummer. People don't give him the credit that he deserves enough. You listen to some of the stuff, you know, like rattlesnake shake and the groove on that stuff. It's oh yeah. The dude is so good. Unbelievable. Even, even even the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame doesn't recognize Motley Crue and they they changed the way videos were made. They they changed the way concerts were presented. Their so songs much. are enduring. Yeah. Uh, and, and not to badmouth any of the people that we're talking to later, but if you compare. Mm. Right. <laughs> but, the, you know, it's funny, though, too, because I remember going to see a, a Motley Crue show and they stole the laser introduction from Triumph. Oh, the sport of Kings tour. So this bald guy, it's a big laser bald head talking. Hey, are you ready to do this? And it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> and there you go. And, and he froze at that point. And he froze exactly and they at put, that wait, point. But then they took the, the green laser bald head and they put a, they put a pink spiky wig on the bald guy and then he said the exact same thing but about motley crew mm. that's fun and but then of course kiss on what other tour they took the motley crew uh cranes from the end you know listen people do <laughs> it the you way it goes man, it's it's rock and roll man everybody borrows from everybody but Songs, nobody steals from bon jovi stuff. they're an original exactly an original yeah at the end of the day i think la guns invented all of this so everybody else is knocking <laughs> them off all right <laughs> <laughs> the drills this summer, everybody. Make sure you go get it. It's going to be awesome. Volume two, man. Stupid good lookings. All right. Yes, so, sir. Merci beaucoup, as we say in Montreal. Thank you. Yeah, Phil, was a pleasure. Awesome to meet you, man. Uh, we'll see each other online. Absolutely, guys. Take care and good luck with your uh, project, Jeremy. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I'll definitely send you some of the stuff to check out. Okay. Yep. Thanks, guys. Cool. Cheers. See, see you later. later.